and a very warm welcome to Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show. And I'm so, so chuffed to have my friend and colleague and someone I've known a long, long time, actually, and that is Ross Jardin-White uh, from Arts One. Hi, Ross. Hi. So lovely to have you on my show. It feels like we've done this before, but we haven't. No, we've known each other for ages now. We've never actually sat down and done this. I'm, like, I'm very excited. Very excited. I'm sure we're not going to run out of things to talk about. No, we never have before. No. <laughs> um, Ross's CV is pretty damn impressive, I have to say. So I'm going to run through it and then I'll let him talk about all the amazing things that you've done. So uh, as I say, head of pre-vocational training at Arts One, um, which in my opinion is the centre for excellence in arts, well, training arts and Milton Keynes there's nowhere like it is there no we're, we're I'm so lucky to have the job I do it's an amazing place to work yeah it really is I mean I, I you know me I cannot praise arts one enough for everything that they've done but we'll talk about that you know for my son and for what they do for for children and, and young adults in Milton Keynes it is extraordinary um so yeah tell me about your training you know you you're a proper lovey aren't you you've done it all properly yeah I so after school, I got into doing musical theatre and then I was like, it just wasn't for me and I didn't, I ended up starting, took two years, worked out what I wanted to do and then I went to the Royal Conservatory of Scotland and studied production technology and management um, and specialised in stage management for theatre with a minor in design as well. That's quite impressive. Yeah, I was just about taking the time to find out what, what was right for me and find the right thing and then over two years of doing work experience on shows and some Amdram stuff at home. I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. And then it became my life now. Was performing not, was it just not a fit for you? Yeah, it just wasn't a fit. It was just, I've got slightly dodgy ankles, so that kind of made dance a bit hard. So no kickball changes then? Definitely not for me. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, it was just, and I was like, I don't think I'm quite good enough to do it properly. And anything I do, I have to do properly. Mm. I have to do it right. I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to. So I was like, let's take a bit of a break and work out what the right thing to do is. So That was quite yeah. a measured approach for a young chap, and especially from Scotland as well, I guess. You know, was it difficult, you know, in those days being sort of arty and creative and a yeah. little bit different? I'm from a small town. Well, I don't know. If, I think it's quite a small town. It's, it can be small-minded, but it's in the past kind of 10 years, it's really made a shift. We've got a theatre that when I was there, nothing ever came to it. Um, now touring shows visit it and it's had a massive refurb and it's such a lovely wonderful place and I think that it, I was so lucky I had a drama teacher called Jackie and she was just amazing and supported me through everything and my parents were so supportive so I was really lucky and it, it was hard to make that decision because you know from school everyone's like go to uni go to uni go to uni but then you just sometimes have to go that's not quite the right thing it, like I knew in my mental space I wasn't ready to do move away from home and do that um, and I just had the right people around me. And I think that's one of the most important things in this industry, that you have the right people around you who will support you. Oh, that's absolutely everything. I, I, couldn't, re I couldn't agree more, actually. Um, so you kind of decided to, to do that and you quite measured approach. And then, but your, you know, your CV is so impressive. I mean, you've worked in the West End on Dream Girls, Wicked Sunny Afternoon, Cinderella and Snow White at the Palladium. Mm -hmm. I mean, an extraordinary array of shows. Yeah. I get bored easily and it was, I got my first West End job through sending letters to people and eventually Michael, who's a really good friend of mine, met me for a coffee and he was like, if a job comes up, I want to see you for it. And about within a month, a job had came up on Sunday afternoon. We had six weeks left of the run, so I went in and I was like, okay, I'll just do it for six weeks, see what it is. We then extended and ended up doing about six months on that show. I got a bit of a, like a little promotion in that job, which was amazing, which unexpected. And yeah, then it just kind of snowballed from there. And It's an amazing show though, isn't it? I love Sunny Afternoon. It was so much fun. We had, it was just the best. It was such a small theatre. So just loud, involved. We were actually on stage in costume doing parts of our scene changes and stuff. It was a bit of like a crash course. Mm. So there, yeah, that was amazing. And then off the back of that, Michael got Cinderella at the Palladium, which I think was the first pantomime at the Palladium in 30 years. And it was like a huge, like, A-lister cast, and it was incredible. And we were like, this is amazing. And Michael got this job, and I was like, so happy for him. And then a few weeks later, I just got a random phone call. I was just sat in my living room, and they were like, do you want to do the panto at the Palladium? I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I came from nowhere, and then 
a sweet boy from Scotland. Yeah, exactly. Ah! And I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm doing a pantomime with, like, Amanda Holden and Paul O'Grady. And it was, it was so mad. It was me mad. moment. Yeah, yeah. properly. Yeah. And the first ever show I had work experience was at the London Palladium. And I was like, that's the theatre I want to work mm. in. And I wanted to call a show in there. And then our DSM got sick. And then I ended up calling a show at the London Palladium. Then the stage manager left. I ended up stage managing a show at the London Palladium. And I'm like, what is happening? It was obviously meant to be that, you yeah. know, the, the stars, the planets were aligning. And yeah. that's just a... And, I, and a lot of things in your industry, as you know, a lot of it is about being the right place, the right time. Oh, yeah. It's who you know. Yeah. Obviously, talent plays a huge part. It does. But it's timing. Yeah, I've never interviewed for a job in this industry. I've always just got it kind of off the back of the other one. So... I ended up before we started doing the pantry at the Palladium, me and Michael knew we were then going to do travesties. I'd never done a play and I only ever watch musicals. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what a play is. So anyway, we went... Too high, bra. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what's happening. I didn't understand any of it. But then it was just so different. And then, yeah, literally the week I finished that, they phoned me and were like, we need somebody to start in Dreamgirls on Monday. Do you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, okay. Wow. It, it is mad. It is crazy. And it's when you see it out loud, I'm like, oh, that happened. You've actually, yeah. I yeah. mean, they, yeah, these are huge, huge shows. I mean, I saw Sunny Afternoon when it came to Milton Keynes Theatre mm-hmm. three years ago, possibly. And yeah, it, it would have been, yeah. And I, I was astonished at the production values on it. Yeah. And I, I never thought of myself as being a Kinks fan. I mm-hmm. didn't think I knew their music until yeah. I saw Sunny Afternoon. And, I, and it was one of the best things I have ever seen yeah. because I knew all the songs mm-hmm. and you know, the actor musos were phenomenal. Yeah. And, you know, we, the, the stage sort of... I mean, I know... We, yeah, you it know, comes we, out into the audience, Yeah, I know. It? This isn't yeah. telly, but we are, you know... It, it, <laughs> using my hands, sorry, I forget that I'm a sort of radio, but we are videoing It's like this. a little catwalk. It is, over, yeah. Like, so in London, we had, like, that went out over the first few mm. rows of the audience, and those rows were turned into, like, tables and seats. <gasps> yeah. And people would just sit there with drinks. It was like a... And it was like a concert with these amazing singers, and it was so simple, yet so effective. And I lo- that's my favourite thing in a show, when you're, like... That's just genius. And that was the same. I was like, I don't even know who the kinks are. And then I went and watched it the week before I started. I was like, oh, this is the music my dad always yeah, played. Yeah. And then my dad came down and saw it. And he was like, yeah, I play the kinks all the time. You just made me feel really old. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, but isn't it lovely when you go to a show and it just blows your mind? I saw yeah. um, once recently. Yes. Again, same thing, these acting musos who were just off the scale brilliant. Uh-huh. And I had no expectations. I thought, oh my God, it's going to be folk music for two hours mm. and I don't really do folk music. And it was just, it was just delightful, isn't it? It's so lovely when that happens. Yeah, and like, so obviously all the leads have understudies in case they're sick. And one of our understudies could play the four lead kinks, which means he could sing like one of them. He played drums, he played bass, he played guitar. And I think he also played other instruments. And it was just amazing. And he went on for all four in a week at one point. I was like, how does your brain cope do the same no, thing eight no, times a week? And he's been on doing different things. It was amazing. And it was such a small community in that show, a small cast. We only had three ensemble girls who all covered leads. And it was just such a great first West End show. Such a, and I met so many good friends on that show as well, actually. And Dream Girls, I, you know, who, who, was, who, who was in Dream Girls when you did that? Um, when I started Amber Riley. Yeah. Um, and Marisha Wallace. Um, and uh, Karen Mab was our other FA. So the three girls, so Amber played Effie and then Marisha and Karen on some of the shows because it's like you can't sing that eight times a week. And then as that, um, when Amber left, Marisha took over with Karen and Moya doing a couple of shows a week. And then Marisha's like done Waitress and she's like touring the UK with her own show and she's the, just the loveliest person. And again, that was, yeah, that show was mad. That was huge. I never thought, I saw it in previews. And I was like, I'm never going to, like, that's an amazing show. And then you, you get that phone call being like, I need you to start on Monday. And you go and it's like a crash course. You learn a show in a week. And it's like, whoa, here we are. This wee boy from Scotland. Yeah. Mad. She just used to sit at home, cut my granny's grass every Monday. And now <laughs> I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. It really is a fairy tale come true. And yeah. then the biggie, Wicked. I mean, oh, yeah. how? Michael, How? it's all Michael's fault. So, um, who is this magical Michael? Michael is a company manager on Wicked, and he's just the most incredible, lovely person. Um, and I see, he just kind of saw me and was like, "I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to give you a chance because I know you can do it." And then, so some shows depend on how big they are. They have people who just kind of go in and cover for stage management. And Michael phoned me, he's like, "We need some covers to drop in every now and again. Do you want to come and do it?" So every few weeks, I just pop down and do a show or two at Wicked because it just it's nice to just pop back in and kind of keeping amongst that kind of thing when 
and I think it's good for our students now that I like we've got relevant experience this is what we're doing right now it's and and it's yeah it's interesting that you say that because it, it you know the the USP or one of the many USPs of Arts One is the fact that you are also well versed in the arts in that you have you know you've done the West End yeah. you know what it's like you prep your students for auditions and all that tough stuff mm-hmm. that you know that only a huge amount of prep from a professional like yourself would help yeah we've got students from the age of three now I know it's so cute they're so cute every Friday afternoon four o'clock got a class of three year olds and they have the best time (gasps) on their little tutus yeah they wear whatever they want and they've got some twins in there who always come dressed the same it's adorable Um, but we've got students in our agency from the age of four or five I think and it is about you know it's having relevant experience and going you're not going to get a yes every time but you will get it and it's about keeping everyone level headed and because we've everyone's worked or has contacts within the industry. Like when we run workshops and masterclasses, like our sixth form in second year, I think it's every Monday afternoon they have a masterclass. The people who they have in is like when they walk in the building, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're in this building. And Arts One I found over, you know, working there for the past four years in the West End and stuff, Arts One's getting a reputation. People know where we are and know who it is and now we literally train from three years old right up to but 18 for young adult, 18, 21. And then we also have like our adult classes and we have people who are like 80 odd who come to choir once a week. It's it's so diverse. And I think that represents our industry now. You know, mm. we're lucky that we work in a diverse industry where everyone accepts you for who you are. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't get anywhere. You know, we worked with so many different types of people. I've worked with so many different types of people over the past five years and nobody cares about anyone, you know, I'm openly gay, I'm married to Pete and coming from where I came from, that I was, was hard. Say, to was that really tough in the beginning? Yeah, it was. I didn't realise what was going on in my head and, you know, I moved to uni, at the, so I moved away about the age of, I think I was 20. Um, yeah, because I went to years after school, so I was about 20. And it was my first two weeks at uni, I met a guy and I was like, oh, that's what's been going on this, in my this head. This is it, this that's is it, I've yeah. I found that connection with a girl and all the rest of it and then you have to like tell your family and obviously my family are amazing and I was really lucky. And but not everybody's like that. No, they are. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard. I've got a member of my family who didn't accept it and that, that is tough to come to terms with. It's really hard. But thankfully the rest of my family are super supportive and my husband's amazing. Um, he's great. I love and your videos and your, yeah. <laughs> your posts about making cake and everything. Yeah, it's so cute. It's just amazing. And yeah, it's this industry that allowed me, I had my best friend Siobhan at uni I told her, I was like, you know, it's this big sit down thing, like, oh, I think I'm gay. And she's like, yeah, it's fine. No one cares. And that's the point about our industry. And we're so lucky. And we see students, we see boys and girls at our, you know, Arts One who are bullied at their own school for what they do, not for who they are necessarily, but what they do. And that makes them part of who they are. And I'm like, no, that's not a thing. We don't have that. And no. we're lucky at Arts One. We just don't have that. We create a culture where everyone's safe. You're part of our Arts One family everyone is accepted whether you want to come and just enjoy your one class a week whether you're here for 15 classes a week because this is your life this is your Mm. career I think we're quite lucky in that sense that we have a huge diverse group of students I think we have over 550 students now on the part-time school alone and I hope that every one of them feels that we know them and treat them as an individual because we honestly do and I think that's something we're lucky and we have the right team of staff I think on part-time school we're about 20 25 staff going from receptionists to administrators to me to our teaching staff who are all a specialist in their field. If we've got a tap teacher because they're qualified in tap, you know, we're really lucky with the staff we have and they treat our students as individuals and it's everyone's on their own pathway, Mm -hmm. everyone's on their own journey. And that's what I've had growing up, you know. I went through mental health staff, I've went through anxiety, I've went through having two gap years, going to uni and then going, okay, the West End, I'm done with that for Mm -hmm. now. I'm going to come out to Arts One and then... I know Rebecca and James till they give me a job and now I'm here. And like, it's my dream job. Like I get to help people and support people who want to be a version of me or a version of someone else. And I think that's exciting. And that's what is so special about Arts One. And I don't think, uh, you know, you and I can talk about it till the cast come home, but to experience 
the pastoral care that you get at Arts One that you'll get nowhere else in this industry. And I mean, I know, you know, obviously my son Benji came to Arts One after a really bad experience at a local dance uh, college. Yep. And But he didn't tell anyone he danced at school. Nobody knew he was a dancer because it wasn't cool for boys to dance. And he's yeah. not gay. So imagine if he'd been gay as well, plus being a dancer, you know. Yeah. And I just think it's extraordinary that, you know, in this day and age, we're still even having to have this conversation. But, you know... Arts One is the safe space and you can be whoever you want to be but you're the best version of yourself and that's why it's so amazing you could struggle to pass I should work for you guys yeah come on it's like every every student who struggles to you know a student might struggle to pass a modern or tap exam that's okay because that if that's the best you can do and that's what you want to do that's fine and everyone's accepted for being the best version of themselves when I it was just um, summer this year we introduced, um, it's called My Arts One Journal, and it's a mindfulness and well-being journal that all of our part-time students have over the age of eight. When they join us, they get their journal, and they can use it or not use it, and it's about, it's this bright and colourful thing that has quotes from people who are in the industry, it has exercises like, what are the best bits of you? What's your top five qualities? It has things about, what's your goals? How are you going to do this? How could you work on that? It's got a little space for notes, and it's just our parents were so they never thought they'd get something like that and it, they were a few were like but why are they getting this and some students don't use it and some students use it day in day out because it's just about stop comparing yourself to other people mm, yeah in this industry you can't do that you just can't because everybody can do it and you have to be like but I can do it because I'm me mm. and that's what's important about it I think I think as comparison is never a good thing because yep. there's always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be someone not as you know not as good as you. But that and that's life. But yeah, I think in the arts that's never more noticeable. It's very it's very marked, mm-hmm. um, and it is it is it's a wonderful thing. But you know what is another thing that's so amazing about arts one is the fact that you, you know you all have done you know you've honed your craft in that industry in the West End and you know people like James and Rebecca who are so extraordinary. I mean Rebecca is just the loveliest person in the world just had a yeah. baby oh so happy yeah. um and and james grimsey you know he's he's the, i think he's the only is it estel voice coach in the country or oh, one so of we, two yeah he's basically the level of estel he's at he's one of very few in the country and very few in the world so he over the summer was in boston running uh, courses and he's done stuff in australia and across the world and some students will never know they've been taught still. It's, um, you know, it's a way of teaching voice. And some students will never know it. Some people are love it. And we actually put some people through the, quali- the first level of qualification. And he's incredible at his craft. And he doesn't, I always feel, it's hard to bang on about yourself, isn't it? Go, this is what I well, can do. Well, he doesn't bang on about and himself. He doesn't. And no one knows what Rebecca's background is. She's been a performer. She's run courses at various universities and colleges and Everyone's got background you don't know of. It's so hard to sell yourself, isn't it? And also, probably in this industry, you do. You do struggle to sell yourself, but you have to. And, you know, our Art One story, Art One is 14, 15 years old, which, again, not many people know. The sixth form is now, and it's maybe fifth year. And I think it started with, like, two musical theatre classes in a village hall, one night a week, that Rebecca and James ran alongside their full-time jobs. And now... We are open from 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, five days a week. And then we're open now from 8 till 5 on a Saturday as well. Um, it's huge and it's exciting. And we are always looking for new things. Like, our, I've kind of looked at loads of different things. I'm like, our actors don't get much showcase on the part-time school because on the big shows, it's hard to feature a full class of actors. So this May, we've got two actor showcase nights. There are four, level of, four levels of acting. So they're students aged 9 to 16 in 1918, sorry, are going to do two nights of plays and monologues and stuff they've worked on in class because that's amazing that we can, we're finding opportunities for people, I think. And I mean, I've been privileged to review quite a few of your showcases now, and I'm, I'm always just blown away by the extraordinary level of talent, young mm-hmm. talent that, you know, that, that you guys host at, at Arts One and, and the diversity. That every time I go, I'm just... Yeah, as I say, I come away and I'm, I feel privileged because I, I feel like I've seen a, a, you know, I've had showbiz stardust sprinkled all over these, these yeah. showcases because they are so special and so unique. And the, and the showcase is such an important part of the journey mm-hmm. for the students, isn't it? It is. And we used to be called Arts One School of Performance. And, you know, we do train for performance. And 
we don't do a show every year because we feel it's important. You have to have the groundwork in. Mm -hmm. It's important that you do little pieces in class to build confidence. Some students come to us and I drag them into a classroom screaming and crying because they don't want to leave their parents. Oh. And it's that awful thing. I'm like, just trust me. Let me pick them up, Mm -hmm. drag them in. They'll be fine. And then they come out and they've had like the time of their life and they want to come back next week. And that's amazing. And it's about teaching the foundations so that when we come to our, we do a full school show every second year. And so that when we come to that, they're ready and mm. they're ready to go on stage and they feel confident enough and they've got all the groundwork. And I think that is part of it. You know, when I came to Arts One four years ago, I think, to do a show for them, how it started, they needed a stage manager, found it through a friend. And I was like, whoa, these kids are talented. Mm. We don't have to put loads of lights and put, put more smoke on because it'll hide the children at yeah. the back. We don't, we're really privileged. We don't have to have hide kids at the back and hide them with things because we put in the foundations, we train them really hard and we don't just knock out shows every few weeks. Mm. We build up to them. This month, we've started writing our show for May 2021. Wow. So we've done Twisted Tales and... <gasps> Love Twisted Tales. Year. It was bonkers, but it, it was, was bonkers. amazing. We were like, we need to stop doing just a showcase on stage. What do we do? So my husband's a writer. So I was like, could you write us something? So he started writing and we took six fairy tales, twisted them around a little bit, put all of our uh, students into it. And we had dance numbers, acting, singing, music. And then we're like, oh no, what are we going to do in two years? So we started planning it this month and I'm, it's going to be mad. And what I'm you, so excited. I know, and then what you did at Move It last year, I mean, I was, yes. I mean, I know I was biased because Benji was in it, but it was so incredibly creative and the costuming, I mm-hmm. mean, I think it was at Leanne who choreographed, Leanne Hughes. Leanne Hughes choreographed it. Um, and I think between, Leanne's always got a very creative image for things, which is amazing. And we're quite lucky that we do have so many teachers who can teach the syllabus and stuff, but they're also really creative and that's exciting they want to do creative work and because we kind of store it and build that up for like move it's once a year the six form showcases once a year our full school shows every two years it lets us build up that kind of thing and then really go full out on stuff like move it last year was incredible and the level of dance <laughs> I'm like I just sat and obviously we rehearsed in a studio and there's legs flying everywhere I'm like it's mad and we've been rehearsing our pieces for move it this year and the videos will be out by now and the work quality that our students on sixth form, it, I forget they're seven, 16, 17, mm. 18. And it's always a problem when I'm like, I'm having a go at them. I'm like, why have you not done that? And then I'm like, hold on a second. The kids. At your age, <laughs> I, my, when you're at your age, I was like having a mental breakdown, mm. you know, and <laughs> it's crazy. Mm. And, you know, our sixth form, I think last year out of 25 students, we held over 80 places at top level drama schools, like GSA, RCS, you know, all these places, we've got students training, training at RADA. And but everybody gets a place, don't everyone, they? Everyone, and multiple places. Yeah. And we support for what they want to do. And it's about guiding them on their path mm. to get them there. And it's so individualised. You know, we get government funding on sixth form. I think it's roughly for about 15 hours a week. And then there's a bit of a top-up fee for the other few. Because we teach 25, 30 hours. And people are like, well, why don't I go somewhere else for 15 hours? And like, you can what makes us stand out and what makes our students amazing and incredible is the extra stuff. The stuff they're not always assessed on, like Move It. They're not assessed on Move It, but we drill hard, really difficult choreography into them because we know they can do it. Um, this year we've done a six medley, which... Um, Love six. What an incredible show. Uh, just explain what six is. Because it is, is like the one story of the best things I've ever seen. The six wives of Henry eight and... It's just, on paper, I was like, I'm not going to see that. And then my mm. friend was in it. I was like, okay, I'll come see it. I was like, whoa, what have I just watched? Insane vocal talent. Unbelievable. I mean, like, on another level. On another level. These, it is like, what, maybe 10 songs, a few group ones, and six solos, which are like all 11, like your and traditional clever, 11 o'clock numbers. clever, funny. It's witty, yeah. it's clever. It's, yeah, it's so interesting. I did not expect it. So when James was like, we're going to do a six medley, I was like, oh no. I was like, if we're going to do that, we have to do it right. Mm. And we worked hard on making it, des- we designed it right. We, worked, we had so many versions of this medley to get it right. And then we went into studio two weeks ago and filmed it. And I think we started at, I met them at the main building at half seven in the morning. 
and we got them all dressed, all made up, and we finished about four o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. And the video was insane. Oh, I can't wait. And I'm so excited. The vocals on these girls. And then we just were like, how do we make this different? Let's throw nine of our best dancers at it. So we auditioned for it and they done this. And it's just what an experience. And like, we don't just take the piece to move it. We film it. Mm-hmm. And we have an amazing filmographer, Carl, who and his team who he brings in. And it's like, yeah, that, that's why you pick us because mm-hmm. that's the stuff we offer. Like we now have started doing little promotional videos for students throughout the school. And it's like getting more students in front of a camera, getting like, it's extra experiences. Mm-hmm. And if that's not your thing, that's okay. You just do your class, mm-hmm. that's fine. But if you want to do this extra stuff and we are training you right, then yeah, let's throw it at you. Absolutely. I mean, it's incredible. And you've got lots coming up this year. So the first we need to mention is the Easter week. Yeah, so we're Easter. running two Easter school days. We're running one in musical theatre, which is on the 16th of April, and one in Bali and dancers on the 14th of April. So we have uh, special guest stars who generally will work on the West End or touring who will come down for a day. You do a session with one of them and you do a session with one of our team. And uh, that's like from 10 till 4. You do two sessions and then at the end of the day, parents come in and watch what's happening. It's like a shortened version. We do summer schools every year, which is like a week of musical theatre, a week of dance or a week of acting, which are generally the first three weeks on um, an Easter there on our website already. And we were like, let's do a little shortened version of these over Easter. So that's what we're going to do. And um, yeah, it's just like a one day come in, have fun, you don't have to have experience or you can have experience. We split it kind of by age. So you're with people of a like mind. We always kind of split people by age. Even if it's a bit more challenging, you learn better when you're around people who are kind of at the same level as you age-wise. So you split it by age and you just have a fun day. You make new friends. You, you know, I always feel that people feel very welcomed coming into Arts One. You know? Oh, yeah. And we've got groups of students who, I, oh, I, you know, if we're putting somebody new into a class, I'll be like, oh, could you just pair up with this person so they've got someone who they know in there? And then let's like, yeah, come with us and people just fit in. Mm. And that's a lovely thing about it. And it's the same with Easter schools. You can have never been to Arts One, you can have never have danced in your life, but come along for a fun day because that's what it's about. It's about so enjoying places are still it. available, are they? Yes, yeah. they are. They're available for both of those ones, yeah. So social media contacts? Yep, we are Arts One School of Performance on Instagram and we're on Facebook and we're on Twitter and you can find me and James on LinkedIn. We're a bit, we're everywhere, really. You are. Um, yeah. It's a great website as well. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it really easy to navigate. Yeah. yeah, we redesigned our website this summer, um, and it's very fancy. And, um, but easily navigate. It's Navi- so, yeah. Navigable. Yeah. Is that a word? Navigable? I like it. I'm going to use it. Navigable or navigatable? Navigatable. My producer's nodding. Can, navigate. Okay. Well, I just, you uh, can navigate the website easily. <laughs> it is, if you jump on... In, we run a lot of classes and we're aware. Sometimes they're like, oh, what is that? And you can jump onto the timetable. You put what age you are and it'll show you what the best classes mm-hmm. are for you. Give us a ring. We have an amazing reception team. You've got Scarlett, Oakley, Clea, or myself. You might get on the phone and just phone us and be like, I want to get into it. Where do we start? Mm-hmm. My four-year-old child fancies doing a bit of dancing. And we'll chat about what's the right thing for you. And sometimes our initial phone calls with people can be like, 20 minutes, half an hour, that's okay. We've got time for you. Mm-hmm. Because we want you to be doing the right thing that you want to do. It's not about us forcing you into things. It's if you want to come to us, you want to pick us, let's find the right classes for you, which is going to get you to where you want to be. And you, know? you, you absolutely do that. And, it, you know, I, I, it's such a special place. And Arts One will always hold a special place in my heart because, you know, as I said to, to James before, and, you know, what I've said to you is what Arts One did for my son, Benji, well, it has ch- changed his life forever. James yeah. reached out, gave him an opportunity for someone he didn't even know, said he'd mentor him, gave him a place last minute and changed Benji's life. And, you know, he got three offers from four, you know, four or five offers from all the schools he went to audition for. And he would never have had that without Arts One. And he's living his best life. He's at Attic now and he's just happy he comes back to teach at Arts One. And I love the fact that he comes back to teach. And I mean, you know, I get to see him, but it's lovely that connection. You never lose touch with your students, do you? You never leave Arts One. No. And we always say that. And it's a bit of a joke we have. And, you know, I started to say four years ago, I'd done one show and then I'd done another show. And then I started on a part-time basis and I'm there all the time. You're there forever. And you are. And I don't think anybody would have it any other way. Teachers who leave us always come back. And one of our teachers has just got a performing job. So she's left last week. And she's like, but I'll be back. And, and it is that thing. People do always come back. And yeah, we needed a teacher and we give Benji a ring. He's like, yeah, I want to come back. And every time he's in, he's like, have you got anything else for me? And it is lovely. It's so wonderful. You know, because they know the way we train. They know the way we want people to train. And Mm. 
know, our teachers work. We've got a varying degree. Some teachers teach one hour a week because they're a specialist in that field. Mm. You know, Jake teaches commercially, teaches one hour a week on our part time. He also teaches our sixth form. And then we've got Hannah, who's our ballet teacher. She's full time, but she teaches ballet because that's what she's trained in. And I think that's important that in my role, I kind of keep everyone in touch. So a student will come to me like, oh, this Hannah, I'm like, yeah, I know I've heard about it from you four teachers because we all talk, we all mm -hmm. communicate. And that's important. We, you know, if you do all your classes at Arts One, we can look at you as an overall individual and be like, are they at the same place in every class? And are they coping with everything? And that's quite exciting about Arts One as well. Oh, it is amazing. And uh, the question that I ask all my guests is top three shows. Oh, it shouldn't be hard so, for you as a lovely of is, note. Right. It's quite hard. It's like choosing your favourite child. Yeah, exactly. So my favourite show is Wicked. And is that because you've been a part of it? No. Because I've seen it a lot of times and I don't tell anyone. How I, many times have you actually seen it well, face up? I lost count. It's over 20. Wow. That's... Um, I saw it. So my dad brought me down to London when I was like 15. And I, he's like, what do you want to see? I was like, let's go and see Wicked. And then it became like a yearly trip. Me and my dad done it. Oh, that's year. so lovely. It, it was amazing. And now he comes down and sees what I work on. It's mad. Um, but it was the first thing I saw and I was just blown away by it. Every time I will, even like now when I work in it, I'm still like, oh, that, I've never noticed that before. <gasps> yeah, yeah. It's just something magical about that show. It's crazy. Um... And then, I love Dogfight. I've not seen that. Right. So Dogfight is a, it is written by Pazek and Paul, I think, who wrote like Dear Evan Hansen and stuff, but before they were big. And it was done kind of, it was done at Southwark Playhouse, little fringe venue. It's just a nice, simple show. Beautiful music, because that's what they write. Um, those two. And then you've asked me for three. Oh no. Don't have to do there's just anything? so many. It's, it's, re it's really hard to choose. I mean, yeah. it's, it's... And there's so many for different reasons. Yes, I Jamie. Think I saw Jamie for the second time this week. Loved Jamie's it. Jamie's great because it's just is what it is. I love a show that is what it is. Like I saw Waitress on Broadway. I was really lucky. And I saw Sarah Bareilles in it. Oh, and lucky you. It was just so simple. And there's something about a show that just doesn't try to be anything mm. it's not. It's like, here's what it is. Here's incredible music, incredible staging. Come from away. That's my third. Okay, okay, Here you are. okay. Yeah, everyone's Simple, talking about that. Yes. done. Fabulous. Oh, it's been such a pleasure. Honestly, we could wish around for like two hours, but, yeah, time, you know, I'm back again. I will. It's been Happily. such fun. And uh, yeah, no, Ross Jordan White. Yes. Okay, I said your surname wrong for all these years. <laughs> been such a pleasure. And I so said we've had such a good, a good chat. And say, please, you know, head over to Arts One. You know, so if you've got a child who loves the arts in any way, shape or form, wants to perform, you guys are the best in the business. And I'm so proud to be associated with you. I really am. We're glad to have you. I oh. love the fact this podcast exists. Like, it's bringing arts to Milton Keynes. And I've, for instance, living here, arts is a huge thing in Milton Keynes. And you're telling everyone. It's great. Oh, no, I, I'm, I feel very privileged. And, um, yeah, you can catch my uh, show on Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show. It's on iTunes and Spotify and Spreaker. And now I have these... Uh, Smazzy, I'm going to say smart or snazzy, and that came out as smazzy cards that I'm going to I'm handing out at the theatre now, asking people to download the QR code, and you can download my podcast. Easy peasy, get me. I'm so techy now. Yeah, I are. can't take any credit. That's my amazing producer Paul who's pulled that together. So, and he's the one who does all the clever shenanigans behind the scenes. But uh, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure, Ross. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, enjoy you know enjoy the rest of what what's planned, and I'm sure I'll see you before the summer's out. So, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Bye.